Today I'm going to be showing you some more tips and tricks in Ableton. Let's go. The first tip is to tune your drums. This is often overlooked. Even myself, I'm guilty of this. I usually, like towards the end of the track, when I feel like something's missing, I realize that the drums are not tuned. So as you can hear, we have two hats layered on top of each other here. Just to hear it, I'm going to disable that one so I can hear this one properly. I'm going to change it to complex before you change a pitch. Obviously, like when you go too low, even if it's in tune, if the tuning is like, correct tuning is like very low, it could sound really bad. So something to keep in mind. Sometimes you just have to like choose a different sample. I'm gonna go with minus one on this one. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. Enable this other one, disable that. Change this from beats to complex. I usually go down just one more to see if this is, see if I'm actually correct, just to confirm my choice. Yeah, all right, so let's duplicate that. Hear that together. It sounds a little bit more in tune. The kick obviously has to be in tune as well, but since I've done this on a MIDI, I've already tuned it. You know what I mean? So just bring that back. We don't have many elements to work from, which is good for the purpose of this video. So it's not like confusing as fuck. Here we have like a, a sharp hi-hat. Let's see if we can tune this or if we should tune this. As you can see, I've got a fade on here. I'm just gonna release the fade for this. From beats to complex. Yeah, so I think at minus one, it sounds a little bit more in tune. The next tip I have for you is to add some roll to your sub bass. I really quickly added the sub bass into the track because I, I, I didn't have one. You know, very simple, I haven't done much to it. I do this for a lot of elements, but in particular, the sub bass, I like to have a roll. So what I do, you can use any kind of delay. I usually like to go with the ping pong delay, bring the dry weight down a bit like that and bring the feedback down a little bit. So already you can hear there's like a roll to it. There's a roll to it. There's a lot of flow. If you bring it to obviously four bars, it's gonna be, it's gonna ring out a lot longer. Two bars is gonna be a lot more rapid fire because the sub bass does hit fast. I'm probably gonna go with two, but it depends on the song. So let's have a listen. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go with two over here. But yeah, let me just take this on and off. You know, it makes a big difference in my opinion. You can even increase a dry wet and play around with it. And something that's pretty cool, you could automate the dry wet. For example, if you like building up towards the drop. So let's just say we're building up towards the, the break. So let's automate this dry wet. Bring it back down there. See if this makes a cool effect. You could even like be real extreme like this. Let's try that. You see, if I take it off, it still sounds cool. It's just a bit static. When you turn this on, just as an added tip, mess with your velocities on your bass notes. It just sounds like really robotic if I just have them at the same volume. So when I go back there, It turns something simple into something complex, almost. But it's all an illusion, buddy. Langardian Leviosa. F*** that nonsense. The next tip. Add sidechain compression to a lot of your track and sidechain it to your kick. 
the thing you have to be careful is you can easily, easily sidechain too much. Even if you're just sidechaining everything to your kick, like eventually it will just, the song will become ruined. You have to use this technique carefully, but you need it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a mess. Think of sidechaining like tying your shoe. You're not going to put on your boots and like not tie your shoes. Your boots are going to be all like wonky and wobbly and you're going to you know, walk like a fucking penguin. You're just gonna be a mess, man. So I'm gonna start with the basics. The most important things that you want to sidechain and get out of the way first is the sub bass and the low frequencies. So let's start with this. So what you wanna do, real simple, really easily, compressor. Now we're not even gonna compress this. That's the interesting thing about sidechain. You click this arrow here, enable sidechain, audio inputs. We're gonna look for kick. Go to this option here. You can use any option, but I like this one here. Every time the signal from the kick comes in, this is gonna darken volume to give way for the kick because the kick is low frequency and the kick needs to cut through the mix. As you can hear, it's already, it's ducking your volume, right? You can bring the attack down, but obviously I don't like it right there. Like let's find the sweet spot. Just to make things easier and quicker, I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to like the next low frequency thing I have, which is probably this drone here. And I'm just gonna paste it. So as you can hear already, this is like having untied shoelaces, everything's a mess. This is like tying your damn shoelaces. And obviously you can play with the release. Just keep it there for now. It doesn't have to be a low frequency, especially like if there's a lot going on, like this ARP here. Usually if there's a lot going on, I'll add a side chain to the kick. I'm gonna to wanna to tame it a little bit. So I'm gonna copy paste. I'm just gonna paste that side chain to the kick over here. Give it that pump. Now what else? What else can we sidechain? Let's sidechain the pads. Okay, so I'm just gonna group the pads together. As you can see, I like to have my pads hard panned right and hard panned to the left. So these are basically the same things because I like them to be wide. I like them to be the widest part of the tracks. Just my style, just my style. So on the group right here, I'm just gonna paste that sidechain in here. What else? What else can we sidechain? We might be getting into territory of too much sidechaining, but we will know once we're there. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I've got a huge list of things that I want to tell you about and uh, tutorials that I want to, you know, provide some value to you. I'm also working on a new MIDI pack and it's sounding pretty epic. And I actually made this song using the MIDI pack. It's all in my style. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm working on it. And when it's uploaded, when it's done, I will be linking it in the description of this video. Stay tuned for more tutorials. Thank you guys for watching. Happy producing. Bye.